How's it going, Gray Boys? It's week 12. We're nearing the end of the season, but first we have a big game here against another rivalry team. This time it's Central Michigan. Uh, they're 6-3, and three, and the Chippewas are the higher overall team. Uh, it seems like they have a pretty decent defense, but their offense is the unit that's been getting it done for them, uh, and we supposedly have the better defense. We are favored to win this one. We are plus six now on the turnover differential on the season. They're just sitting even on the year. Who have they played so far? Uh, they beat Miami. They beat Air Force. Lost in overtime to UCF. Beat Miami of Ohio. So they've got both Miamis taken down. They beat Ohio. Bowling Green. Lost to Akron, the team that we also lost to. Beat Toledo. And then lost to Western Michigan. So they have us northern illinois and then funnily enough another ranked team in ball state uh, and then we actually play ball state next week so that'll be interesting with northern illinois after that very similar end to the season for both of us now we have a ton of recruits coming to visit this game i think that we can send one more guy uh but there are a ton already on the way Two of them ready. Troy Carter, the 76 overall defensive end. He's going to come. There's a competitive visit there, but I'm totally fine with that because the complimentary visit cancels it out. And the XP that we get is definitely worth it. And then Clinton Whitfield can't come to this game. Uh, the 72 overall defensive tackle is going to be visiting UCLA this week. So he's going to have to come at our season end bye week. And I think that puts us up to nine recruits for the game. So definitely a pretty impressive number as we'll definitely be looking to win. This is a very important game, not just for our season, but for next season with the recruiting. Uh, we got to pull in as many of those players as possible. There's going to be a few chances for uh, top 10 matches to go haywire, but it's just going to be looks like a lot of ranked teams playing unranked teams. We do have number 10. Uh, Auburn in number six, Georgia playing each other. Is that the only matchup? No, we've got Purdue, Minnesota, and Penn State, Ohio State. But all in all, not a crazy amount of ranked matchups. Uh, we're hoping to stay ranked, and we're going to be rooting for Ball State to beat Northern Illinois right now because we want them to still be ranked next week when we play each other because a ranked Maction game would be a very big deal, especially late in the season. Not only that, but it has big conference championship implications on the line. Both of our teams are 5-1 in conference, and we're in the same division. So uh, the winner, assuming we both win out, uh, it'll be the winner of our game between us that will go to that conference championship game. As we are nearing the end of the season, let's take a look at some stats. Ed Bird, still top 25 in passing yards on the season. Uh, David West, the coastal quarterback, is sitting in third, although the Chanticleers have like three losses, I think. They're still ranked, but it certainly has not been a great season, and they're not going to three-peat on the national championship, barring some sort of absolute miracle. Receiving-wise, Chad Bradshaw is second in the country, and Serge Mitchell, our leading receiver, is 104th. Tackle-wise, Ed or Eric Lane, I think it's Eric Lane, is in 35th. Sack-wise, it's Chris Banks uh, with three sacks down in 231st. So we're not getting to the quarterback a lot, but we are still creating turnovers. And while uh, Henry here only has three, they're spread out pretty big among the team. He's sitting in 60, 62nd place. And kicking-wise, we have at least a 40-yarder. We haven't kicked a whole lot of field goals, though, this year. Uh, Harris, top 100, but not really all that impressive. All right, let's get this one underway. Unfortunately for us, the update is not quite out for the Mac with the college football revamp mod, although I know for a fact it is coming very soon. And let me tell you, the gray field is going to be spectacular. Uh, rivalry game with a bunch of recruits visiting. We're just going to go standard home uniforms. Try to make it, uh, you know, very brand aware. And we'll give uh, Central Michigan their maroon pants. It's a 79 overall for them. They've got a 77 offense and an 80 defense. So they do have that slight overall advantage. But hopefully it's not too big of a deal. So offensively, uh, they are doing pretty well. I would say a little bit better than us. I mean, they're scoring 
about one point per game more than us, and they are getting a decent amount more yards, but our defense is number one in the country in terms of uh, yards and points allowed, so we've got that going for us. Their defense, though, not giving up a whole lot of points either. They're keeping their opponents below 20 on the season, which is a big deal. Bunch of guys visiting. If we are blowing them out, we'll try to go for a couple recruit goals, but otherwise, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to hope that uh, we get the win, and that will give us a decent amount of bonus points. Uh, Central Michigan's top players, 91 overall, 89 overall, and an 87. As they've got two defensive secondary players and a running back. Thankfully for us, although their running back is 89 overall, nearing 1,000 yards on the season, we do have the nation's number one rush defense, so we'll hope for the best there. Uh, Jay Jackson's still out for us as, you know, he's gone for the season. Uh, but they've got a right tackle out for the season as well and a left guard out with a torn quad. He should be back in time for their bowl game, but unfortunately for them, he's not going to be available today. So it is time for the rivalry here back at Wright Nearson Stadium under the lights. A late fall evening game against the Chippewas and we'll hope for the best here. Looks to be cold. Makes sense. We are in Michigan at this time of year. Heads is called. It is tails, which means we can just get the ball uh, in the third corner. We can go straight to the sim to see what the defense can do. If they get us an early stop, that would be fantastic. I want to see at least one turnover in this game. I'm not going to expect a whole lot more than that as uh, Central Michigan starting their drive really strong. They've gotten a first down already. Another six-yard run. They're moving the ball on the ground very well. Another six-yard run. They're nearing midfield. This is incredible. First pass attempt is one that's thrown away, and then a holding most likely against the offense puts them in a very difficult situation. And then after just a five-yard rush on second down, it's third and 15. A long ways to go for Central Michigan to pick up the first down. What are they going to be able to do? Looking to pass all the time in the world. He throws it over the middle, and it's caught well short. Corey Young got a lot more yards on that than I expected, but we get the stop. And one of our biggest game plans all season long that we tend to stray away from and when we do it hurts us just run the football give it to jesse wagner he's doing great all season the offensive line is getting a great push and it's going to continue on this first play from scrimmage for the offense now this is another one that's a little bit dangerous the read option ed bird every once in a while goes haywire and won't hand it off or run on his own but this time he's got a blocker in front of him and he's got the first down as well we can take that all day long. Absolutely fantastic. Serge Mitchell has his man pressed up as they don't have a deep safety on this one. So he is backing up, but we're looking for it, looking for it. And we take the sack. I couldn't get that one away in time. Thought maybe I could sneak one in, but just waited too long. Well, that's going to cause problems. They had a second and 20 on their drive. We have a second and 21. This doesn't feel quite as good, though. Uh, at least they were able to move the ball. Serge Mitchell, it's picked off. Oh, we didn't throw it far enough towards the sidewind. And we give Central Michigan the ball in great field position. That's disappointing. So can we get the stop? First play is a loss of a yard. Second play is six yards. It's third and five, and we'll hop in to see what they can do. They've converted once on third down. The defense stopped them last time, although they had... 15 yards to defend this out route could be available no he's thrown to the end zone and it's almost intercepted they're lucky that that one's just dropped they'll have the chance of the field goal and we'll see if it'll be good it is and central michigan takes the first lead of the game up three nothing all right let's just keep it on the ground for a couple plays ed bird's gonna take a hit but he breaks the tackle and we're gonna have him slide down no need to risk Another turnover in our own territory. Uh, we are definitely not going to get lucky with plays like that very often. So uh, counting our blessings there. This one's going to Wagner. Just got to have him go north. Get upfield as far as he can. We make it a manageable third down. And with four yards to go, I'm handing it off. Um, really was tempted to pass, but we're going to give it to Wagner and hope that the offensive line can do something. I might have had a chance to cut it back, but we just don't find the space at the end. So that's going to be three and out. Punts all the way back uh, inside the 25. They take the fair catch. That's okay. Holding penalty against the offense. And a nine-yard rush makes it second and 11. A four-yard rush makes it third and eight. And now another chance for the defense to get off the field. They've done okay on third downs, but they need to get a big stop here over the middle. Wide open the catch. 
It's getting a little bit of stiff arm. She's there as well. 17 yards. Big play for Central Michigan. The Chippewas here going in the hurry up as they're approaching midfield with step back looking to throw this one. The out route wide open is number 82. He just had the catch last time. It's Corey Young. He goes 30 yards on that play. And not only is that his third catch of the day, he has every single completion for the team. Quarterback steps back to find him again and has to go to a different player. It's Brandon Ryan this time, but another first down. And just like that, it's Central Michigan inside the red zone. Wasting no time on this drive, trying to catch our defense off guard. Uh, man goes in motion. That's Corey Young again, and that's a false start from the offensive line. It's going to give our chance, uh, our defense a chance to breathe. Maybe make a couple subs. That is definitely a momentum killer as they go four yards there on that first and 15. And another four yards puts them in a third and seven. Certainly they're going to have to throw once again as we are actually in the second quarter. The start of the second quarter now. Didn't realize that. Makes sense why they're going the other way. And that one, he had a man open but couldn't get the ball there in time. It's deflected. It's fourth down again. So to start the second quarter, we're going to hold them to another field goal. They started the drive so strong, but the penalty just absolutely killed it. This one's up, and that was a... Oh, I thought he missed it. Looked like it was pushed right to me, but refs say it's good. It's 6 nothing. All right, our drives have not gone well so far today. We'll give it to Wagner again, first and 10. Only in our uh, own 15. It was a bad return for us that time. As Wagner's going to fight his way forward. That's a good six yards. We need those on first down the way this game's going. All righty. Can we get a good pass off? I'm looking probably at a check down here, but we'll see. And yeah, we're just going to give it to Wagner. And he drops the ball. Ed Bird now 0-2 on the day. Not great. Well, I know that uh, Jesse just dropped a pass, but I'm struggling to think of what else could possibly work here. So I'm going AI play call, and I'm calling a slip screen. It's third and four if he catches it with some stick. With some speed, he could have had it, but no. Bad decision. Fourth and eight. We're going to have to punt the ball away again. This is not going well. Central Michigan's bringing the heat. Their defense keeping us easily within 20. And okay, it's a fumble recovered by Central Michigan uh, on the punt. And they return it for a touchdown. No idea what happens there. Is that a muffed punt that they pick up? Did they block the punt? And pick it up themselves all that matters is they score a touchdown and now we're down 13 so with 454 in the half we're falling into a bigger and bigger hole here ferguson in motion we're gonna hand it off to wagner again and that time the run goes for pretty much nothing this is tough we gotta figure something out in a real hurry kind of looking for nixon on this on the out route second and nine play action they're bringing pressure Outside the pocket, Bird trying to throw it to the tight end. He just can't get it there. Third down once again. Our third, third down of the game. We haven't converted once. So we'll be praying on this one. Got to put Nixon getting to the line, and we'll see. Can somebody come open? Nixon should be there. Throw it on the time. Okay. Finally, we get a pass completion that goes deep downfield. We'll take that. As long as we score points on this drive, even if it's just a field goal, we'll still be in this game. But if we allow them to put up another score, we would definitely be in trouble. And if the offensive line wants to do that, we would be just fine. Let's try a little counter action here. See what we can get. The blocks, decent to start with, but we run into a blocker. Slows us down. Still enough to move the chains, though. Wagner has been interesting today that's uh for sure let's see what we can do i'm really tempted to send nixon deep but i'm not sure he's fast enough they're bringing pressure we'll give it to serge mitchell over the middle just got to go with the short easy throw there and we'll take our four yards i think i'll be happy with that play most of the time on first down certainly nothing wrong with it as we'll give the ball to wagner again out towards the edge and again i'm just running into my blockers and it's hurting us that time losing the yard it's another third and long Maybe the verticals will work or we can go delayed to Wagner here. I'm not entirely sure. Waiting. We take the sack. Oh my gosh. When we get pressure, it comes immediately. I have no chance to make a read and we just get dropped for a huge loss. Fourth and 17. We're going to have to punt it away again. This time it actually does get punted away, which is nice. And we'll see 
If they can do anything inside two minutes, second and 13 will hop in with the defense and see if they can get the job done. Because I'm certainly not feeling confident. I need them to create a turnover. If we're going to score any points is what it feels like because we can't move the ball on offense to save our lives. It's a good run up the middle, but it causes a third and four. Defense has a chance to save us, and that'll help out quite a bit. Another false start from this offensive line. Thankfully, we have our timeouts, but that might force them to pass the ball, and if they don't complete it, we'll have plenty of time to work with. That one is caught short, and it's a big hit, and the coach actually takes a timeout for us, so a minute and 34. We'll have a chance to put together a drive. Problem is, we haven't really done a whole lot so far this game. 75 yards to pay dirt. Can we get there? Trying to look downfield over the middle. There's Wilson. A big quick throw, and John comes down with it near midfield. Go quickly into the hurry up. Get up and snap this ball. We don't want to waste any time as we find Nixon, and he's got a first down. Where was this fire earlier in the game? Just going to keep bringing the heat. Looking to throw again. B over the middle could be there. Nixon catches it. It's another first down, so it will stop the clock for us. And again, looking to pass, trying to hope for the best. I got to go check down here. Give it to Wagner, who was wide open with so much space, but the lineman released and just got in the way. That hurt. That would have been a lot. At least it was incomplete, and it'll stop the clock. But I was absolutely expecting that to be a lot of yards. We're going over the middle. Broussard comes down with it. A man to beat the back. Juke works inside the five. The stiff arm cheese into the end zone. Dan Broussard goes 32 yards, putting on the moves. And finally, we're going to get on the board. No shutout in this first half. As there is a minute and two left on the clock here in the second quarter. All righty. 58 seconds left for the Chippewas. Two timeouts as well as they're going to throw the first pass. An out route that gets eight yards and goes out of bounds. See if the defense can get the stop. I don't even want to give up a field goal here. I just want to see a stop, maybe an interception, but just don't let them score any points at the end of the half here. Thankfully, they're forced to take their time out there. Although, actually, now that I think about it, I don't agree with that. Just go in the hurry up or spike the ball if you have to. Don't waste your timeouts this far out. Uh, 50 seconds on the clock. Another out route. This one also complete. Wow. Don't know if he got out of bounds for that one. So Central Michigan will be in the hurry up here. Clock starting to run. Pressure not getting there over the middle. This one's tackled well short of the line to gain. And this is where you would want that timeout. This, the clock is just going to continue to burn here. Getting close to 30 seconds as they snap the ball. Again, looking to throw. I saw the outright quarterback's going to take off. He's got a lot of space. Trucks over a linebacker. Gets the first down. That'll stop the clock at least temporarily. They're inside the 30 down to the 25-yard line. 81 in motion. 20 seconds now on the clock. Still one timeout for the Chippewas. As there's a big sack. 15, 14, 13. The clock is ticking. Looks like they're going to try to get another playoff. And this is where the CPU clock management is going to strike. Take the time out here and kick the field goal instead. They're going to try to run quarterback a lot of space. But he fumbles the ball. And unfortunately for everybody involved there, nothing comes of it. So thankfully we get out of danger there. Bad decision making from the quarterback and the coach of Central Michigan. At the end of the half there, we're going to go into the locker rooms just down six as it is 13 to seven. And what do we say? Um, defense did a good job holding them to as many points. A couple of field goals. They scored a touchdown off of some weird special teams play. So they've done a good job there in the offense. Uh, I would say some of it, my bad decision making and play calling. Uh, some of it just dropped passes or the offensive line not doing much for us, but we're still, you know, in a position where we could win this game. If we come out with a good drive to start the third, we could really take over. Oh my gosh, I simmed through the kickoff and Central Michigan has recovered it. So we don't get the ball to start the third quarter. And not only that, but Central Michigan has it at the 11 yard line. That is so disastrous in a big rivalry game that we need to win. We're a ranked team for the first time in who knows how long. And we're getting beat at home as these guys have just come in and forced a couple of really big turnovers. 
I think they're plus three on the day. Two fumbles and an interception as they're looking to increase this lead. Uh, make it two scores, a run up the middle. That one's not quite going to be stopped. Third and inches, defense will have a chance to get the goal line stand here. I mean, they say that they are a yard out, but essentially the same thing. Quarterback under the... Uh, oh, okay. No, handing it off. I thought that was going to be a pass. Good handoff. Not happy about it. Not electing to go for two, which is good news for us. Could come in handy, but it's 20 to 7. Well, I guess that kind of just eliminates our touchdown at the end of the half and certainly eliminates any momentum that we had as the defense can't quite get it done in the short yardage situation. Wagner still struggling to run today, just gets a yard there. Well, the passing worked really well at the end of the half. I'm going to see if maybe we can do something here. Serge Mitchell with the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to send him deep, and now we're going to check it down. Give it to Wagner. If he would have broke that tackle, it's a lot more, but just a yard there. I'm going to take a risk. I don't feel like I can trust our passing on these third downs, so we're going triple option. John Wilson comes in motion. Ed Bird with some space. Going to go for it. And he's short of the line to gain. I'm going for this. This is so dangerous, but I'm going for this. Offensive line just has to get a decent push, but we're going to run it up the middle. Fourth and one from our own 35. Wagner breaks a tackle. Just absolutely trucked him in. That'll keep the drive alive. Thank goodness we're able to move the chains there. That could have been really, really bad. Is this one a risky one? And we throw it up to Amber start diving one-handed catch, but it's at the line of scrimmage. We have way too many pass completions that are just going for no or almost no yards. It's definitely brutal. Simmons comes in for what I think might be his first carry of the game, and Jerome off to the races. That's a big first touch. 17 yards that time. I guess it's his second carry. Uh, that was a beautiful counter. One more big block there. It could have been 30 yards, but... We'll take what we can get as we are now across midfield. Just running it up the middle. Wagner stuffed at the line. Unable to get a yard there. Wish he would have fallen forward. That would have been big for us. Let's see what we can do here. Going to try the rollout on second and 10. Outside the pocket. I'm not seeing really anybody. This, uh, oh, that's a stupid throw. Thought Broussard maybe was going to get a step out towards the sideline, but lucky it wasn't picked off. So now it's third and 10, and we're just one of five on these on the day which is not at all good. Somebody's got to be open. We're looking for it. And this is a tough throw, but Serge Mitchell holds on to it through the contact. Just barely found him coming free. Worst part about this drive is just how much it's taking off of the clock as we're almost under two minutes left in the third quarter already. This one, a handoff to Wagner. He goes up the middle. There's four yards for him. Typically this season, Jesse has been averaging... About six yards a carry. Today, he's been held just to three, which is certainly no bueno. As there's a good one to Broussard, who just really likes to dive for these catches. I, I really don't know where the no bueno came from, but it's true. We'll hope that this one is very bueno. Uh, as we'll give it to Wagner again up the middle, and that's, that's, yeah. Not going for anything. Just can't run today. The offensive line has had a couple of really good pushes, but for the most part today really have underperformed compared to their season. Ed Bird with all the space in the world in front of him dives for the corner of the end zone. Going to be well short, and I was really trying to slide, but we'll take the extra yards and it's first and goal. Ed is not really known to the world as a running quarterback, but with that much space, anybody could pick up yards as we give it to Wagner up the middle. And that was uh, just a big gap. All too easy. Back within a touchdown here near the end of the third quarter. So what can the defense do? Central Michigan starting off the drive strong, incomplete pass already in a third and three. You know, the defense, they might have given up a few points this game, but they're getting these guys in third down situations often, which is always good news for us. Tight end in motion. We'll probably expect to see them run the ball. At least I would. And it is going to be handed off out towards the edge. Plenty of space to work with. Picks up a block. Oh my gosh, the wide receiver blocking is absolutely beautiful, and it's a 15-yard rush for Ricky Rivers. And I gotta say, just the name alone makes me jealous that he's not on our team. Oh, that is all too good. All-name team for sure. As they give it to him again, he looks for the edge again, and a big just shove off of the defensive back that came up to get those extra yards. 
What can the defense do to slow these guys down? Earlier, the passing attack was eating us alive. Now it seems like they can run the ball with ease. Got to make some play calls. Quarterback steps back to throw. This one thrown short, so at least we stop them. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter already as we get them in a third and four. Definitely dangerous. Down six points. Going to have to be in the hurry up the entire fourth quarter if we want to win this one. Certainly, this feels like a rivalry game as Central Michigan has come to play. Don't mind the scoreboard. Still says it's the end of the third. Uh, they're going to step back to pass. It was third down, but now it's a first. So the fourth quarter opens up with a complete pass to move the chains as they are in our territory. A touchdown here would be devastating. Even a field goal would not be good for us. Quarterback feeling the pressure, scrambling around, gets hit and eventually sacked to lose four yards. And unfortunately for us, the clock will be running. Uh, but maybe fortunately, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to pick this one up. The draw play out towards the edge, 37, gets a decent amount of yards. Uh, gets five past the original line of scrimmage, third and nine here. They go back into the hurry up, which is honestly a blessing for us. It might be harder on the defense, but it is so much better for clock management. They're going to step back, looking to throw, and they go over the middle. It's complete. Coverage was there, but not tight enough, and it's another first down. Ben Daniels now 12 of 16 on the day. He's had a couple of decent runs as well. He's looking for completion number 13. He's got it easily over the middle. Another first down inside the red zone. It seems like the defense just isn't quite there on this drive. You got to wonder, will Central Michigan make a mistake or is this going to be all too easy for him? 14 to 20, a touchdown here puts us in a tough spot as they run it up the middle and that's what we would expect to see from the nation's leading rush defense. An incompletion here or a stop on a run would be fantastic. They're going to hand off again and Ricky Rivers found some space, gets a third and two inside the 10. And from the six or seven yard line, a chance to hold them to a field goal. And that's certainly going to help. It looks like it's going to be called a false start and it is so third and seven for the defense now. The huge problem here is that even with a field goal, Central Michigan might be too far out of reach. That would make it a 9.2 score game. So we almost need an interception. This one thrown towards the corner of the end. So the diving catch over the heads of our defenders is complete. And Ben Daniels gets his first touchdown throw of the day. Absolute beautiful throw. They're going to go for two here, trying to make it a 14-point game. This could be big. Throwing it on the run. We get to him, but he gets in. A weird play, but it works out for them as our other rivals are losing to Miami. All right. Well, we have to get incredibly lucky here, and we're going to start heaving them deep, which could mean disaster for us. 26-14. Feeling the pressure. I got to get rid of that one. It's going to be an intentional grounding. Oh, that hurts. I'm just now realizing, though, they didn't convert that. It definitely looked like they converted it. But uh, game says otherwise. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, we'll see, though. Will somebody come open? Second and 21 from our own five. Got to make a throw here. Wilson comes down with it, makes it a manageable third and one. And we got to go hurry up real quick here. Will somebody be able to come open? Or will we just take the sack? The pressure there. Can't get rid of it. We had Mitchell wide open. That was a touchdown. Instead, it's fourth and eight. Well, we're just going to run the same slant play and hope for the best here because that should have been six. Stepping back. The pressure is coming. The lag is there. I'm just throwing it up. It, why is it so laggy? Serge Mitchell gets the catch. Well, that is weird. My computer's uh, having an aneurysm right now. This could be a real problem if that's persistent. We'll hope for the best, though. Uh, looks like they want to bring pressure again. So we're just going to send Nixon deep on this one and see if we can pick up a quick deep ball. Nixon, maybe a step on his man. Ed Bird got it there, but Nixon can't hold on through the contact. Oh, man. The problem at this point is those deep balls can be very, very dangerous to throw as we will continue to look to the air. 322 on the clock. Mitchell comes down with that one, but can't hold on through the contact either. And it's third and ten. Only two of seven from third downs on the day. We are in so much trouble here. This will step back, look into throw. And B was wide open. I throw it to Wagner, though, and he caught it. Oh, my gosh. Diving. He got the first down. 
I absolutely hit the wrong button. I got lucky that that one worked out. A is wide open. Nixon over the middle gets a big 19 yards. And now they're starting to play us really soft. Maybe they could be a little bit worried. We'll try the timing throw. That one should have been picked off. I didn't see the linebacker until I had already pressed the button. That could have been another disaster. Certainly not something that we want to deal with as we'll go back to the air. A, go with the check down. Wilson gets the first down. That'll stop the clock. He's still on his feet inside the red zone. We're not dead yet, but it's getting scary every single play. Stepping back to throw again outside the pocket. A might have been open. B might have been open. Ed Bird certainly can get some yards, and he's going to take a big shot, but at least he got out of bounds. The big problem here is that the defense will only have so much time to work with, and that's going to be a tough stop for them as we'll look to throw. Quick one caught by Wilson for the first down as they're bringing the pressure, and that was lucky by me to make that. We didn't deserve the first down. But we got it anyways. Can we get into the end zone now? Two and a half minutes on the clock. Outside the pocket. A's coming open. Wilson, touchdown. And it is all too close now. It's a six-point game. Coach just wants to kick the field goal and make it five. And I think I agree. Well, it's pretty much out of our hands now. 26 to 21. Can the defense get a stop? They go with the toss out towards the edge. That one's going to lose a yard. Ricky Rivers nowhere to go. And we're going to take our first time out there. Second and 11 now at the 24 yard line. So much pressure riding on the defense with so many recruits as Ricky Rivers gets almost nothing on that one. It's third and eight as we take our second time out. So what will Central Michigan do here? Do they run it and force us to take the final timeout? They will do that. Will they pick it up? No, Ricky Rivers nowhere to go. He's going to lose a yard. It's fourth and eight with 2.09 left on the clock. The defense did a phenomenal job to hold there. And we're going to have about two minutes to work with with no timeouts to drive down the field and win the game. This is a returnable punt. It's not a great return, but Leon Walters gives us six more yards. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't terrified, but we're going to go deep on first down here. They're bringing some pressure. Let's get outside the pocket. And Wilson is open. He's going to drop the ball. You can't drop the ball there. Oh, no. If he catches that, we are so far downfield. That is a terrible time for that to happen. Now it's second and 10, a chance for them to bring pressures. We'll get outside the pocket once again. This is a tough throw. Yeah, it wasn't going to be made. We were going to throw over the middle. Incomplete third and 10. Oh, no. Ed Bird is hurt. McLean is coming at QB. Can he make the play? A lot of starters sitting on this one. Just got to throw it to Mitchell, and Surge comes down with it. On the curl route, enough to move the chains. We got to go in the hurry up, though. And with the backup QB and can we make the game winning drive a lot of pressure on this guy is oh it's a bad throw Wilson was gonna make the nice cut but I got to remember Nick McLean might not be as good so Ed had some bruised ribs but we decided to bring him back into the game immediately we can't afford that that's a bad pass lucky it's not picked off DB's looking the wrong way it hits him on the helmet should have thrown the slant route it's another third and ten for reference, Bird is an 80 overall. McLean is only 60 overall. As I kind of got to go for Vert here. I'm not happy with it, but we'll see what we can do. See if Mitchell is going to be open enough. They're playing off of him. I'm throwing the curl route once again. And Serge Mitchell is all too reliable on those. Not feeling very confident right now, I'll tell you that. As we go below a minute and a half left in the game. I'm throwing the check down. It was a de bad decision. We lost a yard, but at least we got out of bounds. I felt almost certain that we were going to throw an interception there, so I just kind of rushed my throw. Might have been a mistake. We'll see what we can do now. Second 11, a little bit further to go. Uh, it's incomplete. Oh, my goodness. I was about to throw the dumbest pass in our time here at Eastern Michigan, and I am incredibly thankful that that one was incomplete because that would have been really, really bad. Third and 11 this time. Stepping back once again. Plenty of space to work with. Tough throw to make. And Ed Bird can't make that throw on the run. What am I thinking? Oh, no. Well, we are two of two on our fourth downs in the game, but this hangs 
in the balance of one play, and I do not like that one bit. They're not going to bring a whole lot of pressure. We're waiting for it. Running backs open. Simmons holds on to it, and the game is still alive. The wheel route came in clutch, and we're inside the red zone, down to the 16-yard line with a minute to go. I'm scrambling on this one. Wait, we don't need to because we have the touchdown. Serge Mitchell coming free. 16 yards into the end zone. It's a one-point game. Our job's not over yet, though. We got to convert here to make it three so that a field goal doesn't beat us. I'm going read option. This could be the biggest mistake of my life. Jerome Simmons is in it running back. Ed Bird's going to keep it. Ned Bird into the end zone. The stiff arm cheese is enough. 29 to 26 with a minute to play. What can we do? The kick is away. We'll probably expect to see a touchback. No, it's going to be a returnable ball. So every second matters here. Central Michigan does have their timeouts. That was a really good return. Well, can the defense get another stop? Central Michigan has to get into the end zone to win it, but a field goal would put us into overtime. That one's caught near midfield. They'll take their first time out. I am not feeling at all confident right now that we're going to win this one in regulation. 50 seconds on the clock. This one's going to be a draw play. Terrible decision. They lose three yards in their second timeout. Chippewas thought they were going to get a little bit cheeky with that one and catch us off guard. That's not going to happen. This one thrown deep, caught inbounds, and he steps out of bounds 31 yards downfield. And they are in field goal range with 43 seconds. I almost want them to score a touchdown so we have time to win it in regulation. I just don't know if we can win this in overtime. 29 to 26, 40 seconds. They're going to hand it off again. The clock's going to be moving. That is a blessing for us. Central Michigan going to have to go in the hurry up. The clock will wind down to 30 seconds, and they have to save their timeout. For a game-winning field goal, they'll spike the ball there. It's third and six. Big play for the defense. They haven't created a turnover all game long. Could they win it with one here? Another run on third and six is called, and it's destroyed. So it's fourth and seven with the clock moving. And Central Michigan comes out in the field goal formation, so they're going to go for the game-tying field goal, and we'll expect them. No, they're not going to burn the clock. Well, we're going to have a couple of seconds to work with here. Let's see what they do with the kickoff. I hope it's a touchback. Please don't return this. It's forced to be returned. Oh, every second that we just lost hurts so badly. Well, we'll send them deep. Actually, look at how they're playing us. If Serge Mitchell or Dan Broussard can get away early here, this could be a touchdown. Serge Mitchell, can he get under it? He can't catch it in stride. He doesn't have the speed, but there's a second on the clock. We don't have time to spike the ball. We're just going to have to go for the end zone here. I'm not certain I like the play call, but we get it off in time. And throwing it up in the end zone. It's incomplete. Oh, that was a bad attempt. If we had one more second, I, we would have won that game. We could have spiked the ball. Unfortunately, we're going to go to overtime. Oh, if he catches that one fully in stride, he's gone. Central Michigan wins the coin toss for overtime, so we're going to have to start on offense. You got to feel like there is momentum on our side at this point. We've come back. Can we finish it off? The counter to Jerome Simmons. The juke kind of froze the defender a little bit. Gets him seven yards. Wagner's going to come back. Back in for this play. Second and three. Giving him the handoff. Plenty of space to work with. And he gets enough for the first down. And the best part about a first down here is that we can still get another first down. Just making sure that we hold on to the football though. Wagner with a huge first down carry gets inside the 10. Jerome Simmons now with a chance on second and two. He's going to run it up the middle. And he's going to get no. I thought he had the first down. He's called down short third and inches. I don't want to pass the ball at all here in overtime if we can avoid it. So we're going to hand it off to Jerome once again. And cutting it back inside, Simmons gets into the end zone. The four-yard touchdown run gives us the lead here in overtime. And if this extra point is good, I'm going to feel really confident. It's up and it's through. 36-29, to 29, time for the defense. 
Well, this is going to turn into a really long episode at this rate. Who knows how many overtimes we could see. Quarterback rolling outside the pocket. Fires it to the end zone. It's caught the first play from scrimmage for these guys in overtime. And it's a touchdown. 36 to 36 potentially here. The kicker puts it through and we're going to double overtime. Well, can they make it two plays and two touchdowns? The defense gets the chance to go first in double overtime for us. We'll see if they can do a little bit better. All too much time for the quarterback on that first one. That's a decent completed pass. Get some four yards. Got to hope for the best on this one. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run. Maybe a draw. They don't go it to Ricky Rivers. Instead, it's just thrown away. Play looked broken from the start, and they have to get rid of it. Well, that brings up a huge third down. If we could hold them to a field goal, we have a chance to win this. But it's not guaranteed. Especially if I'm going to have to make the kick. They go with the handoff. A terrible decision, especially that draw or mid-draw. They're going to lose a yard. And it's up to the kicker now to keep them alive in this one. He's made plenty already in this game. Can he make another to keep his team alive in this game? Kick looks up. It's good. 39-36. And now a touchdown wins it for us. Just got to pray they don't hold us to a field goal of our own. Simmons will be first to run the ball here in the second overtime. And he's going to pick his way through the line for a couple of yards. We didn't pass it all in the first overtime. I'm going to attempt one really quickly here in this second overtime. Go and check down. Wilson keeps it. Gets some solid yards and it brings up a third and one. Well, this is going to come down to the offensive line here. They're not stacked up very well. They should know we're going up the middle because... What else would we do in this situation? And Simmons has all too easy of a time getting us that first and goal now inside the 10. Let's just keep on running it. Simmons still in. Wagner probably has no stamina left at this point. Coming off the edge, they just destroyed that play. Second and goal, we lose three yards. So we'll be at the 12-yard line. And I'm not sure this is the right play, but we're going to read option. Edwards broken, though. And he's going to lose even more yards. That's disastrous. Unfortunately, I got to go for the play call that makes the most sense for our team. A field goal keeps us in this game, but if I throw a pick, it's all over. So we get a five yards and we center the ball up for the kicker here. And I'm just praying that he can send us into triple overtime on this one. Nothing blocked. Just put it down the middle. Oh, well, he did it. 39 all on to triple overtime we go. All right, the offense back on the field again. At some point, something's going to give, and we're going to win this one. Call the audible to back him up, and look it up the middle. Simmons has plenty of space. As we go with the quick handoff, we caught him definitely out of position there. We can't trust that a field goal will be enough, so we got to find the end zone if at all possible. Simmons almost ran straight into a defender. Somehow, though, they give him the spot, and that's a first down. This one is working a lot better than I had expected. So we'll step back to throw again. Pressure coming. That's dangerous. Wilson thankfully drops that one. We didn't need to lose the yards on that completion. They're watching the checkdowns there, which is pretty brutal for us because that's been our bread and butter in the passing game recently. Simmons with the juke makes two defenders miss and he's into the end zone on the 15 yard carry. A thing of beauty right there. Oh my gosh, the hospital bills will be astronomical as the ankles have been absolutely shattered. I do not agree with this. I don't think the rule is in this game where we have to go for two in triple overtime, but maybe it is. Either way, coach is keeping the offense on the field and I'm running up, up the middle, giving it to Simmons and Jerome into the end zone. It's 47-39, an eight point lead in triple overtime. It is fully on the defense now to win this game. Multiple opportunities, even if they give up the touchdown, and that's certainly not good. 13 yards on first down for the Chippewas. Oh, man. They're going in the hurry up here. The toss play towards the edge. Decent amount of space for Ricky Rivers there. He gets four yards to bring his team inside the 10. Gives them a second and six to work with. And they can still pick up a first down if they get to the one. Which is absolutely crucial. Tight end in motion again. I'm expecting a pass. And it is going to be a play action. Quarterback with plenty of space. He's going to take off and nobody's anywhere near. Ben Daniels with the eight-yard scramble to find the end zone. 
going to come down and do a two-point conversion. We could be going to quadruple overtime. Oh, Lordy. Stacked up at the line. What's going to be the play call? It's the toss out towards the edge. Ricky Rivers can't get the stiff form. Cheese. Sorry, it's Jared Wiggins. Either way, Lorenzo Henry wins the game for us with the tackle in the backfield. In triple overtime, we beat our rivals with nine plus recruits visiting. Absolutely phenomenal play of the game is Dan Broussard being an absolute madman. Juking a guy out and getting the stiff arm cheese. And how about the comeback? We started this game poorly. We lost the turnover battle by three, but somehow we come out on top. Ed Bird is the player of the game. I gotta say, yeah, sure, I agree with that. After he threw that interception, just came alive when he was throwing and made some really good reads. Had some decent runs as well. So it's an instant classic against the rivals there as we win it in triple overtime, stopping them on the two-point conversion. Absolutely massive stop by the defense. Uh, man, that was a tough game through and through. Uh, we end up outgaining them through the air. They outgained us on the ground, though, and that 3-0 on the turnover battle is just so brutal. You got to imagine this shouldn't have been as close of a game as it was, but Central Michigan created those turnovers and really capitalized off of them, so they deserve to be in that position, but we come out on top, and oh, I am so happy because that means that we get to stay ranked. Ed Bird went 24 of 39 for 300 yards and three touchdowns and then ran it for 12 yards and almost a top touchdown. And then Mike Briggs uh, had the forced fumble, although I don't know if that forced fumble really did much for us. Eight other tackles and a tackle for loss isn't all that bad. That win will move us to eight and two on the season. And that also means that we get to move towards week 13 where we could be playing a ranked ball state if they're able to beat Northern Illinois. We are in a bunch of recruiting battles still. Vince Young has locked us out, and how about that? They're not great players, but we get four guys to commit, including Mike Moore, the 64 overall cornerback. Are we still ranked? Is Ball State still ranked? We move up to 21. They move up to 23. So we go from a big rivalry game to a big ranked matching game. Uh, we're favored to win. They're the higher overall team. Uh, unfortunately, though, that's going to have to do it for this episode. It's been a long one, so we got to get out of it quick here. Although you guys definitely deserved a long one. Uh, it took a bit of a break there for the birthday, and I think that we should be getting a little bit more regular with the uploads here. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. After you've done both of those, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also a link to my Twitter where when we hit 200 followers, we're going to be doing a t-shirt giveaway. And then there's links to our community discord and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get that for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the great boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.